Hello guys, you're very welcome here back to the channel Star Paulo Azul and Super Academico and today we're going to continue our playlist of the book New Rules of Sociological Method by Anthony Giddens. Here it is. So uh, today we're going to the eighth, eighth, eighth number eight, eighth, eighth <laughs> episode, eighth video video number eight of the playlist and i hope you are enjoying both channels and uh, i i think you are because we having we're having a, a good number of views so before i begin don't forget to subscribe to the channels both channels and ring the bell for notifications if you want to and of course share like subscribe and the other thing is comments make comments so let's go continue with the third trap chapter yeah, chapter number three uh, the the title is order order power conflict marks here i know that in english language especially in the united states many people don't like karl marx but it this is a prejudice is a it's a great theoretical uh, thinker from sociology from economy from philosophy so what can i say about this order power and conflicts by by giddens not me by giddens uh marxism marxism is a movement is a social movement and a theoretical movement too dialectic between humanity and nature the order the other is a dialectic of classes so uh, since Karl Marx takes the the concept of uh, uh, dialectic uh, history yeah? history the dialectic process in history from Hegel he sees the dia the dialect between humanity and nature uh, uh, it means that humanity transform nature to produce the survival in in this way he transforms uh, the day the, uh, we transforms itself and changes so in that dialectic way and there is the problem of the dialectic dialectic of classes so the ruler class and the work class they are in a codependent movement that produce this dial the dialectic movement in history according to Marx um, there is little to be found in Marx in the way of a systematic analysis or elaboration of the basic notion of praxis praxis well uh, Giddens saying that because uh, there is some kind of a uh, uh, direction in the Marx theory about society that says that uh, it's necessary to observe the praxis uh, the practice of society to elaborate the theory so the theory should should happen before uh, uh, sorry after the observance uh, the observing the praxis but the problem is it's not uh, it's not well defined the word uh, the concept of praxis he heavily discusses interests conflicts and power outside of the context of classes how far these concepts relate to socialist society is left obscure well uh, the problem is that uh, in any theory in any body theory there is the use of some concepts that uh, are not completely developed so it depends of us the readers in the future uh, to do that Marx's writings do not provide an elaborated alternative to those main traditions of social thought whose philosophical anthropology is centered upon the concepts of value norm and convention he's saying that uh, and it had has been said for many uh, by many people that Marx lacks of a uh, social cultural 
interpretation of society and that should be why his theory his his like uh, his narrative fails in in a uh, social social tr transformation uh, in the whole uh, in the transformation of a, of a society from a society a capitalist society to a socialist society in some kind of revolution way revolutionary way the production and reproduction of social life appears in Marxian, in Marxian ontology of praxis. So uh, there is a way, uh, is the constitution, uh, constitution of us as human beings that uh, we produce and reproduce our, our social life, our way of life. So this reproduction is ontolo ontological of our praxis as living as we live as we live the production uh, or constitution of society is a skilled accomplishment of its members of course uh, of course the members of a society are the the ones that enable uh, the society with their skills our production is necessarily production material circumstances of human existence interchange with nature <coughs> so the production of social life depends of this interaction with nature and somehow maybe for us today it's difficult to see this relation with nature because we are so a part of nature in a way in the way we live you know our urban life is not that nature is not there but our day-to-day -day life is, is away from nature we don't see nature in, in a book in a computer we don't see in, in a cell phone you don't see nature in these things but the nature is there because of the the raw materials uh, transforming the material world in order to survive okay i already said that medium of human practical activities now the language the language is the medium of human practical activities so uh, given saying that uh, some of an, some analysis of language human language is lacking too in the Marx theory about uh, about power relations eh? about economic relations language a skill that makes sense but not full of uh, knowledge uh, so we we speak eh, our language in a way that we do not understand the full significance of what we're saying in the way of matter because uh, it's a natural uh, it's natural the natural way that we communicate language is not possesses possessed by any particular speaker uh, the community of speakers has this possession in a way even so even so nor the individual nor the, the community has the whole language language community social life reproduced in practices so this is social communities so uh, i think that giddens is trying to contribute with the the social theory of marx by uh, uh, adding the idea of communication of language of uh, the individual participation uh, the 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 way that us as individuals in a society contribute contribute to this uh, th this way of going even that's not denying the marx social theory of class relations but he's adding this question this problem of language and communication so next item is the production of communication as meaningful uh, Merleau-Ponty says Merleau-Ponty is a French philosopher says that uh, the, the will to speak is one and the same as the will to be understood agreed but in everyday situations of interaction the will to speak is also sometimes the will to baffle puzzle deceive be misunderstood also agreed 
So <laughs> in our everyday life, we speak in a way that we want to be understood, but we also use the language to be misunderstood, to deceive, uh, lies. Uh, as Gadamer emphasizes, emphasizes, we already talked about Gadamer in the, the, the early chapters, practical so social life displays ontologically the characteristics of the hermeneutical, hermeneutic cycle. So, uh, uh, the practice of everyday life uh, appears in this hermeneutic cycle because we can interpret these actions, okay? That's uh, the, the, the way the interpretation of the, the sentence for, for make easy for you to understand too. Uh, humor, irony, and sarcasm all in uh, some part depend upon such open possibilities of discourse as recognized elements of the skills whereby interaction is constituted as meaningful. So it is, uh, these aspects of language, humor, irony, sarcasm are parts that depend uh, of the, 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 the way that we speak, uh, that we speak, the, the speech, the discourse of uh, everyday life uh, has this, uh, the, has to have the possibility of use these aspects of language. So it also need to be understood by the social scientists. Mutual knowledge is applied in the form of interpretative schemes whereby contexts of communication are created and sustained in interaction. So uh, the interaction produces the understanding. Uh, that's the way that communication works in a community of speakers. Next item is moral orders of interaction. Dierheim, we already spoke about Dierheim in the last video, came to elaborate his original views in his later works. He nevertheless always tend to stress the significance of norms or as constraining or obligating to be approached through the notion of sanctions. So, uh, in Dikhan theory, the society imposes obligations, norms, uh, to the individual by the, the threat of sanctions, of punishments. He is saying here, as I understand, that uh, this can be this can be re-elaborated in a way that is not only that. Uh, it's not only that. I wish to argue that all norms are both constraining and enabling. It means we are forced to follow the norm, the law, but we also learn from it. That's enabling. Uh, we can learn from the norm. The, uh, Michel Foucault also says something like that. If you don't know, just look it up for him. Look, uh, Michel Foucault is a French philosopher, social philosopher. The constitution of interaction as a moral order may be understood as the actualization, 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 sorry, of rights and the enactment of obligations. So that's uh, following the same thought as before, uh, when you perceive uh, the, the, the behaviors in society, we follow rules, but also we learn from it, from them. Uh. Next, the actualization, actualization of external sanctions may draw upon offers of reward or on the order, on the other hand, not order, other hand, may hold on, may hold out the threats of force. Okay? So the, the, the sanctions that comes from away, né, from, from outside, may also offer rewards, prices to the good behavior, to be, be the, the, the expect behavior. Relations of power, two aspects two aspects about relations of power. One, the possibility of clashes of different worldviews, 
or less microscopically definitions of what is. Two, the possibility of class between diverging understandings of common norms. So, in the power relations, eh, the relations of power, it's possible to, to, to have conflicts of point of views, uh, world views, and it's possible to have conflicts of uh, different ways of understanding the, the, the rules, the norms. So, uh, he will develop next these two aspects. I don't know if it's possible to finish the chapter today with this. I don't think so. It's too much. The video is already 15 minutes. Yeah, it's too much. I think I will split into two. So, we have this cliffhanger of these two aspects of power relations to the next video. And I hope you expect, enjoy, like the video, of course. Comments, subscribe if you're not a subscriber, and follow our other, other, others contents in the description below. So, till next time, be good and bye bye.